Yo, Rocco, it's Ebro. Hey, what's up, bro? What's up, man? We got K Fox here, too. Hey, Rocco. Hey, what's up, Okay, How you doing? Good, good. Yo, man, I know we catching you early in the morning, my G. I know you probably just coming back from the club or the studio or something, but I wanted to get to you now that your song is caught, you know, not only is it blowing up, but it's getting a lot of attention because of Ross's lyrics. I just, real quick, do you have any plans to make changes to the song? Um, I mean, it's like, you know, with the record, you know, I went in, I did the record, and it was for my mixtape. You know, and I didn't have a clue. I knew it was a good song, but I didn't have a clue that the streets would be so receptive to the record. You know, mm-hmm. and um, you ain't even know. You it. ain't even know it. And I ain't even, I ain't even know it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but with that being said, you know, the record became a instantly became a smash. You know, or like over the All Star Weekend and and stuff like that, and it, it just became a smash in the streets. So. You know, with me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I base myself, I feel like I'm a street artist, so I feel like uh, the record, the record with Ross, that will always be the original record, you know? But because of the, the type of traction that the record has as far as, like, radio and all over the country, you know, and things of that nature, it's, it, it puts me in a, in, a, um, in a position where I have to change it. Yeah. So what's yeah, the so, um what's the plan? What are you gonna do? Um, I mean right now, you know, at the present moment I have like um six different verses from, you know, all type of different, you know, very talented, multifaceted artists, you know, like some platinum, some multi platinum, uh some may even have some 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 bigger accomplishments like Grammys and things of that nature. I have to do my research. But, um, I heard like, that um, uh, that Jeezy was going to be on one of the remixes. Is that true? Um, I can't confirm that. I know he did a verse. I know he did a verse. And but you you really haven't stopped. made the you haven't made that final decision yet. No, I haven't. I haven't put the record together yet. Now, and you know, I'm glad you said you you know you're a street artist, and you know this song is a perfect example of something I've been saying for a while. There's a lot of things that people disagree about street life and cu- club culture. Um, and, and street culture and things that have been said, whether it be in, and Talib Kweli had called up here to talk about it last week, saying that, you know, there's lyrics that Biggie said with regard to, you know, rape or other things in the past that people gave a pass to. And now that Ross is saying something unsavory, people are really taking exception to it. But I think the point here is this. If you want to be a mainstream artist, this is the kind of heat that comes with it because Pac and them was getting heat for their lyrics back in the day as well. If you want to be a street underground artist, you can get away with a lot more. And it sounds like, Rocco, you're making a, a kind of a conscious decision that you want to go beyond just the street, so you're going to make the adjustments. That's true. That's true. I mean, it's like in, in life, you know, you have to you have to put everything on the scale. You know what I'm saying? It's like if it's not wearing up, then you just, you know, you have to do what you have to do. And, uh, and with all respect to the home and Ross, because, you know, when I reached out to him and I told him about the record, you know, I sent it to him, and he sent it right back. Yeah. You know? And uh, you got to salute that, you know, and I salute on that. You know, and it's crazy because it's a catch-22. Yeah, it you know? is. It is. Because it's like, you know, I don't want to take him off, but one thing about it, though, one thing for certain is set in stone that he's always going to be on that song. On the original. Yeah. Yeah, because because the song is in the street, and it's so heavy in, in the street. And it doesn't matter who I put on the song. That's gonna always be the original version of it. You know, it's not like I could. It's not like I could do another version. Be like, okay, this is the original, right? Yeah, here. nah, you can't. You, you know can't. what I'm saying? You know, yeah. so. Okay, that's what's up. Okay, Fox, you got it. You got another one. Yeah, Rocco, we're gonna let you go back to sleep in a second. But um, I noticed since I'm gonna do me, which was fire in these streets a little while ago. You took a. I'm gonna do me. Yeah, you took a mini break. So, what was the cause for your hiatus for such a long time? Um, I mean, one thing people don't know about me is that, you know, I'm an executive first. You know, I'm a CEO. Um, I got a record company. It's called A1 Recordings. And my uh, first artist is Future. Yeah, a lot of people don't know how much money you got, my G. <laughs> so you were working with Future and then also working on your own stuff. Yeah, I rap for the sport when I feel like it. That's why it seems like, you know, he takes forever to come out. He does this. He don't do videos. He don't do interviews, you know, whatever, whatever, because... I just really rap for the sport when I feel like doing it. 
I just want to be heard when I want to be heard. You know, I really don't get all get all the way into like the politics and, and things of that nature when it comes to being an artist, being a rapper. You know, I rather be an executive. Now you know, um, me and Future, we got a chance to build recently. He was in New York. I went by a studio, checked out his records, and I had told him, you know, I know he don't like doing interviews, so I told him we was gonna come up with an idea. I'm gonna come to the studio in Atlanta, and you know, record some video and audio down there with him. You know what I mean? In, okay. in his environment, because I know he don't. You know, it's gonna be interesting to see where Future's career goes because he's not trying. He loves making music, but he's not trying to be like on front page like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Future's an incredible talent. You know, I I haven't really in my in my day I really hadn't experienced no one with the work ethic like his. You know? Yeah, no, nah, he had like before he even got popping, he had made like what some five hundred songs for just mixtapes and streets, right? Oh yeah, he lives in the studio. You know, he told me that before I signed him. He was like, "Man, bro, just put me in the studio. I guarantee I'm gonna throw the hardest. I'm not gonna come out." The thing that surprised me the most was, and Fox, you'll appreciate this and everyone else, he actually, without all that auto-tune and all of that studio, you know, uh, uh, you know, processors and all that, has this real, like, bluesy, street, kind of hip-hop vibe to his voice. And I, I was actually surprised. He was telling me he freestyles a lot of his music, and then y'all go back in and edit it up and but make songs out of But he freestyles a lot it. of the hooks, right? Yeah, the hooks, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, what's That's interesting? Ever seen him do. Go ahead, go what's interesting do. to me is that you guys say that Future doesn't like doing interviews and stuff like that, but he's been very vocal about expressing his fondness for Sierra in different yeah, interviews. That's true, but I mean, that's his. I think he's got. You know, you could tell by his music that like, he's just like that kind of guy that's not ashamed to be in a relationship. But Rocco, what's up with them? You say Rocco, what's up? What? <laughs> Future <laughs> and Sierra. <laughs> Hey man, you know, I mean, both of them, my family, um, we've been family for a long time. You know, that's all I could say about it. You know, he's working on uh, her album with her, right? That's correct. Rocco staying way away. <laughs> he from said that's that, correct. <laughs> like, I'm not talking. I'm not talking on another man's situation. Yeah, I like them. I like them together. Though. But wait, you're in a you're in a, a, a relationship too with a superstar. Who? Cool. No, nah, I'm not going steady, buddy. Oh, you, that, that's not you? Well, he was. Nah, I'm not, you have a, I'm not a baby going. with Monica, right? But she's she's married now. To, oh, okay. Yeah. That's right. That's so, right. Yeah, we got yeah we had two little boys, you know. And um, shout out to Mo. You know what I'm saying? Like, she married. You know, we tried it. You know, and it, it didn't work out the way that, you know, we wanted to, you know, in the beginning. You know, in the beginning, you know, we were thinking that, it, you know, it was meant to be forever. But, you know, in life, when people grow up, and people adjust and, and, and try to do different things. You know, sometimes people go apart. You know, like, when I met her, I wasn't doing music. Ah, you know, okay. I started doing music, and, you know, it's like, you know, music is where it's time-consuming. It take away from, you know, a lot of things you love. You have to sacrifice because it's a grind, you know. And um, I think I think with, with her and I, you know, we kind of just grew apart, you know, and, and, she, wanted, and she wanted to be married. And I wasn't. You were still in the street. Life, yeah. I, well, I wanted to be married, you know, because I, I was married to the grind, married to the hustle. Yeah, man, so, I could, I could relate. I had nothing 100%. but the utmost respect for her. You know, I had nothing but the utmost respect for her husband. You know, he's a cool cat. You know. All right, that's what's up, Rocco, man. 